Hello and welcome to the Temple of Tomes with your host, Indie Comics Jones. Today is January 26th, 2021, and this is episode 185. And first, before we get into The Witcher, i uh, got a little bit of comic book news for you. I was at the store today. One of the things, uh, it's got a bad news and good news, and we'll start with the bad news. Bad news is it seems like the price of comics is going up. I uh, just about every book I looked at was $4.99, $5.99, and $6.99. A notable exception was Xenoscope's Gretel Witch Hunter, which is a bigger book, but it came in at a whopping $8.99, so I passed on that one. Um, and I just want to mention there were a couple uh, number ones that, that were out there that I also passed on, uh, not so much for the price, um, but... Uh, one was called Dead End Kids, and it seemed to be a lot of proper propaganda for virtue signalists out there. Uh, just about every kind of trope and uh, stereotype for people that were being oppressed was uh, in the first few pages there. So I passed on that. And the other one was Deadpool. It was Deadpool, number 10. King in Black, though that's, I believe that's the first issue in that King in Black series. And that's written by Kelly Thompson, and it just didn't look that good. Um, it was, you know, the union, I've done that for King in Black, and it's a little bit off compared to what Donnie Cates is writing, but it's good. This did not look good. I just did a thumb through. I did that with Dead Kings, Dead Kings, Dead End King Kids as well. Just a thumb through, and neither one of them looked that terrific. So I passed on that. Good news is Spawn number 314 is still only $2.99. So Image is keeping the price down on Spawn. It's probably a pretty good move for Todd McFarlane as he continues to grow that franchise after all these years. Okay, let's take a look at The Witcher, Fading Memories. This is three of four from Dark Horse. Celebrating, what is that, 35 years. And it comes in at a whopping $3.99, so they're keeping the price down on this. Um, the cover itself, it depicts uh, the Witcher. It doesn't really look like him so much, but it is the Witcher. He's actually getting pulled into this pool of murky blob stuff. And you see these little hands here. That depicts the Foglet's hands grabbing and pushing him down within. And as you can see, he doesn't appear to be fighting back. Um, the this, this situation does occur in the book, but not this, this depiction here as well. Okay, let's. Uh, this is a recommend, by the way. I've been loving this arc. Very strong, very spooky. And let's go through it and explain why. I'm going to really butcher these names here. On the story, it's Bartos Sitzbor. The art is Ahmad Mir. And colors is... Hamdureza Shezga, I guess. <laughs> the cover was done by Evan Cagle. Um, this is a CD Project Red editorial, so I think they're uh, licensed to Dark Horse, as you can see down there. They're the ones that do Cyberpunk 2077 as well, the game as well. It's not doing so hot right now. So we start out. The Witcher is in jail, and he was actually kind of ambushed when he went out to investigate a rogue mage. He was jumped by the city guards from behind after he discovered some things just were not quite right in this city that was supposed to be a paradise. Now, we see these blurbs here, and they were a little confusing at first because they seemed to be justification of what was going on in the story. Turns out these are the notes from the doctor that he'll visit later on in a different city. So you might want to just skip these notes and then read them once you get to the doctor as he hold, hands over his notes. It makes a lot more sense suddenly. Um, otherwise, it's a little confusing going back and forth here. Now, the Witcher was investigating a disappearance of a child by these creatures called the Foglets. They look like little gremlins or goblins of type. They're very scary looking. They came in and grabbed the kids at night. So he was sent there to kill off the foglets and he's discovering a lot more. The mayor is hiding something. The mayor is a woman here. 
And she's telling him, okay, you're free to go. Just leave right now. We'll pay you. Just go. By the way, the city is not happy with you. They've told lies about him in the city that he is causing all this grief. When in fact, he is discovering the truth and being held back. So he gets a little revenge from the uh, guy that knocked him out here. Um, the art in here is really nice. Very simple, but it's really nice. I, I just like the the perspectives that you get. Um, there's, it's, it's wonderful. Um, you can tell that somebody's upset. This is actually the woman of the of the child that was taken by the Foglets, and she knows that. She believes in the Witcher, but everybody else in the town is very upset with him. So we move on. Later that night, the Witcher actually comes back into town, finds the bard. The bard alerts the blacksmith who comes out because uh, they want to find He wants to find out more about this mage, why he's locked up in a tower. And he believes the mage is causing all these problems. Uh, because apparently the mage is making food rain from the sky too, so it's actually feeding this village. So they kind of want that to continue. So the blacksmith comes out and says, get out of here. He says, no, I want to talk to you. And the blacksmith hits him with the hammer. And then this seems a little extreme, but the witcher chops off the blacksmith's hands. Um, I think he would have just knocked him out. <laughs> so, so that's the end of his occupation. He is permanently retired from blacksmithing as his son holds them. So he really doesn't find out too much from the blacksmith, obviously, but he presses the bard further, and the bard tells him about a doctor that is in one of the nearby towns. And so we start getting these nice um, landscapes as a, we see the witcher, Riviera, um, Geralt Riviera, riding off, leaving the old city behind. And he comes to the new city, and I love the perspective in this uh, panel here. So you've got the, the foreground with the crow there. You've got the middle ground with the her, the sheep herder there, and then the, the buildings. It's very complex setup composition, even though it's a simple drawing, but just the scope of it, it, it looks, it adds to a, a nice realism, even though it is a drawing, and it's not a realistic drawing. It's just, it's just really nice work. So basically this guy tells um, the witcher where this doctor is, and it turns out he is no longer a doctor. Um, he's actually a shoemaker. So first the shoemaker doesn't want to talk to him, and the uh, witcher presses on so that he relents, and he actually gives him his notes on him. And this mage that was mentally ill, um, that's actually what sent the doctor away, he couldn't deal with it any longer. So with this new information, the Witcher goes back. And this is when you should read all these blurbs, because then it starts making sense, because these are the doctor's notes. He goes back to the mayor's house and actually kidnaps her and takes her to the tower where the mage is. And he they call for the mage to come out. And the mage, because he's a little bit delirious, a little bit crazy, or a lot of crazy, um, summons the foglets, and the witcher really doesn't fight back. He actually lets these foglets pull him down because he realizes they're kind of the mage's illusion, and he's going to pull down. He's overcome by the, the foglets. He's being pulled into this, this pool that suddenly appeared, and you can see him being pulled down. But he realizes that the illusions that the uh, mage sees, and these are illusions from his childhood, or, or nightmares from his childhood actually come to life, and that's what's going on here. So sometimes he's he can help out, he wants to help out, but sometimes these these nightmares overcome and he makes them real. So we get these scenes where we've got the, the mayor and the mother of the mage, uh, imaginary mother and the mage, he's seen them both, talking, seeing them both calling for the mage to come out and stop and we get it's just pretty intense scene really intense um not a lot of witcher fighting in here but it's just a really well written well paced story and finally the mage comes out and he doesn't know who anybody is and it's to be continued and the next issue is the conclusion to all this so yes this is a recommend very strong story writing i i 
can't recommend it enough. It is just really, really good. And that is Witcher 3 of 4, Fading Memories. Thank you very much for stopping by the Temple of Tomes. As always, please subscribe, please like, please leave comments. I think we're up to 74, uh, 74 subscribers. <laughs> Bad joke. I always like that one, though. Um, so please subscribe if you get a chance. And we'll see you next time. I think I'm going to do Shang Li or Chang Chi next. Uh, and that, I believe, ends that arc. Uh, Brothers and Sisters, I believe, is the name of that arc. And we'll see you next time at the Temple of Tomes. As always, this is Indie Comics Jones bidding you adieu.